so excited for the players uh, and the coaching staff. Put a lot of hard work in the last two weeks, um, and uh, we know it's not perfect by any means. But uh, can't tell you how happy I am. Happy I am with the resolve that those guys showed. Uh, it was uh, it was a back and forth game, and um, we made some plays that we hadn't made in the past. And uh, credit to credit to our guys that made the plays. Now uh, I thought Skyler was big time when he needed to be, uh, and uh, got us some field position with with his running and, and, and throwing ability. And um, then on defense, I think the first guy on defense we have to praise is Devin Ankel because Devin Ankel kept putting him in bad situations and as as. Poorly as we tackled still, and we need to continue to work it and get better, um, we were able to make some stops on, on third down and even fourth down to hold them to 17 points. And so, um, you know, I, I told the guys, you just got to have, you got to keep believing and keep having resolve. We're going to have some, we're going to have some tough times. We're going to have some great times, but uh, you got to keep battling for each other. And, and we talked about just winning the play and, and not worrying about the scoreboard. And uh, uh, we were able to do that and, and, and find a way in the fourth quarter. That's what I'm hoping we can build off of. Is we found a way in the fourth quarter to make a couple of stops, drive it 95 yards and get a touchdown, and then you know essentially run out the clock. And so obviously ecstatic for for the players first, and and then for the staff as well because this was a this was a big win for the program. When you absolutely needed to have it, Skyler stepped up and of course had that had that big run, 95 yard drive. Can you walk us through that 61-yard run, first of all, and just how pleased you were with that overall drive? Well, the drive in general, I remember when we, had, we talked to Coach Mess, let's be aggressive. You know, they kicked it down to the five. We could easily run it three times, punt it back to them, and, and take our chances. We said, let's be aggressive. Uh, and we throw it on first down, and, and Malik almost makes the guy miss and takes it 70 to 90 yards himself, but we get a, a second and five. And then we were running a lot of sh shallow crossing mesh routes and stuff where they were doing a good job uh, later on of picking them up. But when you do that, you lose your eyes on the quarterback. So um, Skyler saw the opening uh, after the mesh route was taken away uh, and then made a big play. But just making that play was important. What what we hadn't done is have an explosive play, and then all of a sudden you end up not not getting anything out of it. But to be able to finish the drive, Sebastian makes a big catch. Uh, we actually convert a fourth and one. You know, it was good stuff, and and there was not a question in our mind that we were going for that on fourth down because I didn't want to have a three point lead. We wanted to have a seven point lead, and so obviously, uh, and then cap it off with Skyler making a tough run. Did you go into this game thinking it would be a game where Skyler could make some plays and take advantage of it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just because of all the the man coverage that they played, uh, and, and I and they played, I thought really good against us on defense. They really did a great job of of trying to uh, match some some cover, match some routes with their coverage, and and uh, trying to stop our run game. And uh, you know, we we didn't have Phillip Brooks. We had Malik Knowles for basically a half. Um, you know, we're, we're banged up at a lot of spots, but we we were able to find enough um, and, and make enough plays. Was it essentially like a pitch count kind of thing then with Malik? Yeah, it really was. He didn't practice all week. And, um, you know, then when Philip wasn't able to go and he practiced a little bit and we, we thought it was close with Philip, but he couldn't go, that, um, you know, we said, hey, let's, let's work for the second half and see if we could get him in there and get some plays. You did a good job with the running backs, defensively holding their running backs. It really was because we were we were thinking that was going to be more Delton, and so we had a game plan for Max and didn't execute it very well, uh, and had a game plan uh, a little bit for Delton, and we only had him I think maybe three or four plays, um, and, and so we kind of had to flip it a little bit in the second half, and and I give uh, Doug a Doug a ton of credit because he he hadn't shown that. Uh, on film, um, but he's a tough kid. He's only a freshman. I thought he played exceptionally well. Um, but uh, all those things being said, I thought our pass defense is what really won us the football game. Pass rush and pass defense. The uh, touchdown pass to start the game to Nick Leonard when you got them to fight on the, or when you had to set for play action, do you think that opened up things for the rest of the game, showing the there? 
Yeah, I think so. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd seen that um, where we could maybe lose the, the inside linebacker's eyes and get uh, Leonard's behind him. And um, we were trying to do some things with motions to try to lose the linebacker's eyes to get some a semblance of a, of a rush game going early. And, and uh, obviously, um, our, our play action has to continue to improve, but our running game has to improve for our play action too. Uh, why Huber's uh, sack? Did you talk about that? How big you know, he has a big motor, and how, how that was, how that was important. In the game. Yeah, it was a big play on that. Uh, you're talking on the last drive, I believe. Yeah, he makes. Uh, well, we called a pressure and let the ends get upfield and go, and he dipped the corner really well. And, and you're right to get him into a second and, and 19 or whatever it was after they had, uh, you know, thrown a couple of passes to number one, who's a great player. We were able to at least get him off, off schedule on the chains. And then you know, we pressured him on the last play on fourth down. We said, we're not going to let that quarterback sit back there or run the ball to beat us. We were going to bring heat. Speaking of the pressure, what seemed to be the difference, especially in that fourth quarter, being able to get to the quarterback and even uh, knock him down, even though you didn't get to him a couple of times? Um, just to be relentless uh, on the guys and, or up front. And, and I challenge those defensive guys at, at halftime because I, I, I believe – we can continue to play better on defense, and, and that's probably the first time all season that I I really challenge those guys on defense, and it's not something I typically do. Uh, but I, I thought they, they responded, especially after we gave up uh, the long run for the touchdown with the quarterback. Uh, I, I thought from there on, they, they really played uh, pretty well. What are, uh, among the things that he did today, what are you most proud of when it comes to Skyler? Just the toughness and resolve, because he got hit a lot. Um, and uh, he always he just kept coming back. I mean, the fourth and one play, I didn't have a great vantage point, but I thought they had him p pinned in, and he kind of knocked off that tackle and then kind of ran through a guy for, a, for the first down, uh, and then I just thought he was more decisive, and we took some shots. I know they were incomplete, but son of a gun, if we can take some shots vertically downfield, it's going to soften some people up, and Malik made a good play. And I thought he, the throw he made to Dalton Schoen was, was big time, so uh, Skyler continues to impress me, and I just love the kid because he's such a competitor. It's been more than 30 days since you guys tasted victory, and I know it's been probably a small lifetime, it seems like, since Mississippi State. How big was this win for you guys? Well, we had a couple of open weeks in there too that didn't didn't make it any didn't make it any easier, um, especially when you lose a game then have, have two weeks. But you know, I, I don't want to get caught up in the results, and that's part of our issue in society is we're all so much based on results. And if the results aren't there, man, it's a negative day. Man, we, we've got to start. We need to focus on the process as players, as coaches. We're six games into this tenure, and it's not going to be perfect. But if we keep attacking the process and keep stacking great days, we're going to have some great days like we had today and I, I one thing you will not hear me talk about with our football team is the negative because there's just too much negative in this world right now were there specific areas that the defense showed up after Dugan's uh long touchdown just we're able to keep the cup and, and be able to keep our leverage and we ran through contact a little bit more um and you know we we probably teed off a little bit we we started going towards the quarterback there was one time he gave it they maybe got three yards and, and why it just drilled him because he was keeping it so much and he's a live runner so we were able to take some shots on the kid um and, and the kid's a tough player but uh, uh we started to try to take it out of his hands now the backs are good players and they were so big up front that uh we just had to get some kind of a negative play and get him into a third and five to third and eight because we thought we could get him into a throwing situation, we'd have a good opportunity. He gets away for a broken play and then on a read option for the touchdown. Yeah. Uh, just can you address the tackling issue? Yeah, we, we got to get better. You talked about needing to get the, the running game going to open up the play action. You talked about yep. the running game today, 94 yards, 61 on one run yep. by Skyler. How difficult was it to run the football against TCU? What do you need to do? Yeah, give TCU credit. We, we have to continue to uh, be more physical up front, continue to, to ID people, continue to ID the pressures when they come. Um, but I, I believe in what we're doing offensively. I believe in, in the guys uh, up front, the backs and stuff. Um, we just, we're going to keep grinding and, and we're going to keep working on trying to run the football with more success. Coach, for as young as Wyatt is, um, how do you maybe quantify just what he brings in the leadership department? And, and just as a player, as far along as he is as a player. Well, I think Wyatt would tell you he's barely scratching the surface of what he can be as a football player, and that's what I feel. I, I love Wyatt because of his motor and competitiveness and, and those things, but I, I think he can give more. 
I really do, and I think he knows he can give more. I, he has taken on some some leadership roles. He's a he's a captain as a redshirt sophomore. He's on our leadership council. He's holding people accountable, um, and, and uh, I think the sky's the limit for what his ability is. And and the guys look up to him. I mean, he's he's a freak of nature, and he's a great football player, and, a, and even a better person. And that's what I like most. Is he's a great person. Yeah, another Wyatt question. I know you already asked specifically about that sack that he had on, on the first yeah. down, but then three plays later, he, he gets the pressure that basically ends their final really. Just how dominant was he on that final drive? He was, and and he was dominant because we were able to keep him fresh. You know, we didn't have um, uh, Massey today uh, because he was injured, so Kyle and Reggie and, and – um, Wyatt had to go, and we even had Eric Gallon, and then Eric Gallon got hurt. So we were trying like heck to keep those guys fresh at the defensive end. And um, you know, he he was he's got a motor, and he knew it was a passing situation, and he made some plays. To follow up on Brooks' status, he said he was game time. Yeah, lower lower body injury, and we're hopeful that in the next week he could play. Two weeks, it's it's really day to day. He practiced a little bit, but just didn't have the explosiveness that, uh, and I didn't want to have him re-injure it. How much of a play was the pump block that you guys got? Huge, huge play, and something that we, we saw uh, in the scheme and, and um, did a really good job of, of, of getting hands on it and almost scooped and scored it. We were trying to, but the big bigger part of that is then to get a touchdown out of it was big. Coach, a couple weeks ago you said when you were at uh, North Dakota State, every win seemed like a bit of a relief. Yep. Um, after the game, you gave me a big hug. Is that more relief or relation? That was joy. That was elation. That was a big win, guys, and I think we all know that. Um, and uh, because of the couple of setbacks we've had, and we've talked about always moving forward, and, and I and I truly believe we have a, a, a good football team, but they have to believe it. And when you hear so much negativity, sometimes it takes your belief away. And I was excited for the players first because I know how hard they work and I know how much it means to them. And uh, I, I promise you one thing, those guys are busting their tail and, and want to play at a high level. Anything else? I was going to ask Coach, I guess I don't Mike, but just how promising was it? I mean, we talked so much about Malik, but then you get you, you have Leonard step up and then also Joaquin Gill. So it's like a whole group. Yeah, Joaquin stepped up big, and, and we needed Joaquin too. Um, he'd been nagging hamstring for a long time, and he started to get healthy the last two weeks, and uh, he's playing with some confidence. And, and we need more than just Dalton, Malik, whomever. I think YB's getting better. He wasn't as a big a part of it as what I thought he would be today, uh, but moving forward he will be. Chris Heron the same way. We're, we're getting uh, more confident in, in more guys at the wide receiver position. All right. Thanks, guys.